What's up guys, welcome back again to your Heroclix headquarters. Today, we're gonna to be going over a detective team that I think is pretty viable competitively if you wanna try it out. Starting us off, without further ado, we of course have the best detective duo, uh, Batman and Superman here, the world's finest. Of course, we're using the new legacy card from Batman Team Up that just makes them absolutely nuts. So if you guys haven't seen that already, uh, of course, we're also gonna be equipping them with the utility belt since they have the uh, Batman family keyword. But their first trait here says, when they are KO'd by an attack uh, before removing them from the game, you may generate a character named Batman and or a character named Superman from your sideline on their last non-KO click. Uh, then heal them two clicks. Then the total points of the generated characters must be equal to or less than their point value. And if they're 60 points, you can only generate one instead, protected pulse wave. So I'll say right now, um, I don't actually have it myself, but I plan on the deceased chased uh, zombie Superman to be the you know main thing on the sideline to bring in for when they would be KO'd. Um, so keep that in mind for later. But then they also have the trait that is just free, make an attack, but only to target an opposing character that, since your last turn, made an attack or used outwit. So you basically get a free attack every turn from them. It's nuts. But then their next trait here says, when they would be dealt damage by the effect of an opposing character equal or less points than them, roll a d6. On a four through six, they take a maximum of one damage from that effect. Uh, and then the defense power here gives them combat reflexes, invincible, super senses, but increase the result plus one for each action token on them protected pulse wave so yeah super nuts um invincible combat reflexes super duper senses they also have stealth from batman team ability and can see through hindering from superman team ability and uh taking a look at their 60 point line here because we were playing them at 60 they just have charge super strength that special defense power and four damage with close combat expert so they'll actually be a 12 for five up close um, or potentially like seven if they're hitting you with some terrain. So they're able to deal massive damage. They're really hard to hit for only 60 points and they are just nuts. Plus they're getting the free attack and everything. And on top of that, you've got the utility belts that, um, you know, you equip it to them. We're getting it for free because they have the right keyword and you can point it to any of these to start with. And then you just take a free action to roll a d6 and turn this equal to the result. But because they have the keyword, you return it uh, up to the result minimum one. So as long as you turn it at least one, you can turn it anywhere between whatever you rolled. Uh, so it gives you a little more freedom for what you're picking here. But yeah, some great effects here like smoke cloud and smoke cloud is free, incapacitate and plasticity, force blast and leap climb, range combat expert with a minimum range of four is really great for those free attacks. Uh, improved movement characters and shape change is really good. Regen and support is great as well. So yeah, just lots of good options there for some, you know, free bonuses for them. The next detective duo we have here is one of my new favorites, Hawkeye and Hawkeye, the new convention exclusive. They are just so cool. They are too much fun. I've really enjoyed the like one or two times I've managed to be able to play them so far. So taking a look at what they can do here, of course, they actually start out with this awesome trait that gives them free, place them in a square of different elevation within range and line of fire. Friendly bystanders named Kate Bishop can use this trait as well. So it's kind of like the uh, Spider-Man wall crawler trait, except it's within range and line of fire, not just four squares. So they actually have a six range. So it's pretty crazy how much mobility these guys have. If you've got elevated, you know, like this within six squares of them, they can just hop up here and then they start out with an eight movement running shot and six range. So then they can like, you know, running shot over here and pretty much be shooting your opponent's starting area with no help whatsoever, just on their own. Improved targeting also for uh, hindering characters and can make range attacks while adjacent is amazing. You also have Avengers and Shield team abilities, which are both great team abilities to have. Uh, 75 points is kind of a lot nowadays, but they're well worth it with that uh, 12 attack precision strike, you know, some ESD leadership, especially, and just that rainbow dial there that just, there's a lot of crazy power combinations on every click. So they are good no matter where they're at. But then they have this other amazing trait here that once per turn, when Hawkeye and Hawkeye make an attack after resolutions, you may make an attack. So you get uh, basically it's kind of like having flurry all the time, but you can also use it with range attacks, which is freaking awesome. Uh, and then at the beginning of your turn, Hawkeye and Hawkeye may generate a Kate Bishop bystander. If they do, they can't use this trait until Kate Bishop is removed from the game. So uh, it's really nice just to kind of, you know, run them up there, get two shots off, next turn, get two shots off. And then at the beginning of your third turn, when they're double tokened up, you just 
pop out the uh, the Kate Bishop to make an attack. Uh, and then you have her trait here that says when Kate Bishop is generated, give her a die showing any result. Kate Bishop can use standard powers printed on the click of Hawkeye and Hawkeye's card that matches her die's result. And when she's KO'd, deal them one damage. And uh, she just has, you know, 11 attack, two damage, uh, but she's autonomous. So her actions don't count against your uh, your team's actions, which is amazing. And yeah, just you could place any one through six. So you can't get the stuff on click seven, but you can get anything they have on one through six. She gets all their powers, um, which is just really cool. You know, you get like some running shot penetrating blast if you need it or precision range combat expert, you know, it's just all the options. So really, really awesome, fun figure to use. So right off the bat, we got two incredibly powerful attackers, one for up close, one for range. But moving right along next, we are going to be playing uh, Misty Knight and she's gonna be giving somebody the detective keyword, which we'll talk about in a moment, but uh, first we'll take a look at what she can do. So she's got defender's team ability, uh, which doesn't really matter. I don't think anybody else on our team has it, but some people can copy it if need be. Uh, we'll get to that. And then when establishing theme teams, choose a friendly character, the chosen character gains detective keyword, so she can make any character on the team a detective. And we're going to exploit the heck out of that. So uh, we'll talk about that in a second, like I said, but she's got stealth, super strength, toughness, and a uh, special damage power that gives her leadership and free choose one to last this turn, close combat expert and a power or enhancement and range combat expert. So either way, she can be taking shots with range combat expert or, you know, if she's up close, hitting with close combat expert. So she's always going to have some pretty good attack and damage values there, you know, at least 11 for three, no matter what, uh, except for her last click, I guess. Uh, but still, only 30 points and you can choose between empower or enhancement so again really good like i just said we have one really good close attacker one really good range attacker um, you just put her on whichever one you think you need at the time uh, whichever one she's in the position to best utilize and boom you got you got some extra free damage there and of course leadership as well as the keyword cheating for a mere 30 points she makes a great addition to the team because she's going to help cheat um, Necron to have the detective keyword. This dude is super ridiculous, of course, as you guys know, probably. But in case you forgot, we'll take another quick look at him. Uh, power Cosmic Team Ability, free, generate a grave hindering train marker within range and line of fire. Friendly characters with the Black Lantern Corpse keyword occupying or adjacent to enemy friendly grave train markers may heal past their starting line if healed by a character with the Black Lantern Corpse keyword. So that's part of the reason he's so ridiculous because um, it just allows Black Lanterns to heal past their starting line. So for only 40 points, what we're playing him on, you know, yeah, he's got sidestep and prob, which is really nice with the seven range, sees through uh, hindering but he's going to definitely work his way up here, hopefully, to get some penetrating blasts for like four damage. Uh, so hopefully we'll make use of that if we can heal him up enough. But he also has steel energy, but may use it with closer range attacks. And when an opposing character is KO'd after resolutions, heal a friendly character with the Black Lantern Corpse keyword two clicks. So anytime you get out there and KO something, boom, you got two clicks of healing on him or our other Black Lantern we're playing, which is of course, the Black Lantern Batman. One of at least two Black Lantern detectives because there's also the uh, Martian Manhunter. So this dude is, in my opinion, by far the best Black Lantern character we have. And uh, you really just need to play him with Necron to make them both a little extra ridiculous. But of course, he's got uh, Batman team ability for that stealth, but he also has free generate a grave hindering train marker in Batman Square. If there is already any friendly grave uh, marker in Batman Square, instead place him into any other square with any friendly grave marker. When it's not your turn, lines of fire drawn to friendly characters through any friendly grave hindering train markers are blocked instead of hindered. So it gives everybody super stealth that happens to be in a friendly grave marker. And with him and Necron making them all over the place, it's pretty nice. Uh, we're also playing him at only 40 points because we want to start on the low line there with a the special movement power and of course the special damage power because mainly we want the flurry and sidestep uh, but also we even get this special outwit that when Batman uses it he may instead choose to target all opposing characters occupying any friendly grave markers. Uh, if he does choose a color instead of a power, targeted characters can't use standard powers of the chosen color until your next turn. So it's actually been ruled that this does, in fact, get around protected outwit 
because uh, protected outwit specifically says this character's powers can't be chosen for outwit, where this is choosing colors instead of powers. So uh, specifically protected outwit, it can get through. However, it can't get through safeguard outwit because that just says the character can't be t even targeted by outwit or chosen for outwit at all, period. So uh, if they're safeguard outwit, like from cosmic energy or whatever, they're fine, but he can get through protected outwit on certain powers, which is really, really strong as long as they're in a grave marker, which with Necron, he can just place them under a character uh, and, you know, there you go. <laughs> but even just a regular outwit is super good too. And if you guys don't know the combo with him and Necron, first thing you're going to want to do with Necron is take the free action to put one under himself. That way uh, he can, you know, heal past his starting line. Uh, and then next turn you want to take a free action to shoot one way out like at least seven squares or even move up and take the free action to put one next to an opposing character. Because first turn Batman is going to put one under himself for free. And then next turn when Necron shoots one way out there, he can place himself into, uh, you know, any other friendly grave markers instead of making another one. So he can just pop all the way across the map and then he has sidestep flurry. And of course, if he hits both attacks with his steel energy, he can heal up to click number two and, you know, be a little bit stronger there, have a little more life in him. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's pretty much that combo. You get Batman all the way across the map and just flurry on somebody. And to make that even more effective, I'm also going to equip him with Bucky's arm for that close combat expert. Of course, for only five points, getting close combat expert for the plus one attack and damage on each of those flurry attacks is going to be great. And it also gives super senses on a six, which, you know, having another layer of defense is never a bad thing. So yeah, this uh, equipment with Batman is super ridiculous. He's going to have at least a 12 attack for damage when he's flurrying. And that's just coming from like all the way across the map. Um, and now, of course, to really seal the deal here, we do have to play both Scott Porters. You know how it is, you guys. Um, I wish it didn't have to be in every team, but they're just too darn good. And actually with this team, it is actually really necessary. I have really wanted to, uh, at least when I do team builds and include them, I want to start doing like alternate things so you guys can have something else to use, you know, if, if you don't have both Scott Porters or don't want to use both of them. But with this team specifically, you at least need the white shirt Scott Porter because he is going to be equipped with the Indigo ring for free because he has all keywords all the time. So that's going to give him support. Uh, and he's also going to have Black Lantern keywords. So he's going to be able to support our Necron and start healing him up right away. So that's his main job is to be healing up Necron. Um, and we're going to play the other Scott Porter just because he's such a good support figure, even though he's not Black Lantern, so we won't be able to heal them up, but he's still just, you know, everything he does for 25 points is super ridiculous. So that is pretty much the team there. Um, basically, all you got to do, you know, like I said, they can zip up with their arrows and then running shot and shoot all the way across the map by themselves. This uh, black shirt Scott Porter can at least TK out these guys who uh, I don't even have them on the correct click for some reason. We need to have them on their 60 point line. There we go. You can just TK them out there so they can get within charge range to charge in on somebody, hopefully picking up some terrain along the way to smack somebody with. Um, and yeah, just getting some massive damage that way from the two of them. If they KO something, you get some extra heals from Necron. You know, like I said, the whole Necron combo to get Batman out there to start flurrying on some guys. So it's a really, really strong team. You know, white shirt Scott Porter is healing up Necron. Once he gets healed all the way up, then you could actually TK him out with the other Scott Porter. He can get some like, you know, four damage penetrating blast in, or you can run her up there to get some enhancement. You know, she can sit next to both of them and enhance them so they can be getting double range attacks with four damage and uh, like five damage penetrating blast from him, massive range damage. Uh, so yeah, just great combos all, all together. I really like the synergy of this team a lot. And let's take a quick look at the sideline because detectives, if you guys didn't already know, have like the most sideline options of anything. Um, it's actually ridiculous because, of course, right off the bat, you have access to every single mystery card there is, which unfortunately does take up a sideline spot. But we are going to use one of those on the sideline. My favorite one is the uh, String of Cat Burglaries. The reason I love this one so much is it's really easy to get to the first suspect ability. And this one of the most powerful abilities, in my opinion, on all of the uh, mystery cards. And that's just with three tokens. And you get the clue tokens on this one whenever a friendly character with uh, the Batman family or uh, detective keyword hits 
an opposing character will not occupy hindering terrain. Uh, so it's you know, obviously we're going to be it's really, really easy to do that, especially with Necron. Um, once you get three clue tokens from hitting three times while you're occupying hindering terrain, then you get this effect that uh, when a friendly character attacks one or more equipped opposing characters, modify their attack and damage plus one. It's super powerful. So you actually want to kind of aim for the characters that aren't equipped. that are just easy to hit and get rid of real quick. And, you know, just if you can get three hits quickly, then you have a plus one attack and damage for your entire team on all of their equipped characters. So really, really strong effect. And if you manage to get the case closed, you can take a power action to dequip somebody. In my opinion, it's not even worth it. Um, you might as well just hit them with the plus one attack and damage at that point. But if they have some equipment that's making them like impossible to deal with, then that is an option. Um, and then next no-brainer choice, of course, we have uh, Scrappy-Doo, who, you know, can come in off the sideline when any of your detectives that are 60 points or less are KO'd. If you guys haven't already seen Scrappy-Doo, of course, there he is. He's a pretty good little close attacker to replace one of our characters when they get KO'd. And this can replace literally anybody on the team except for the Hawkeye and Hawkeye duo. Um, now, of course, it's best if you replace the uh, white shirt porter because he will have the uh, mystery ink keyword, so he'll come in at the full dial. Um, so you just have a couple more clicks there. He starts on click one instead of click three. So, you know, it's best to replace white shirt porter, but uh, if you want to, you can replace any of them. It, it's pretty awesome. Uh, and then another one here that uh, is something you can't really use on a lot of teams because there just isn't a lot of people that fit this criteria, but we're gonna use the Agent Coulson Legacy card who can only be brought in off the sideline when a friendly character of 50 points or more with a shield keyword rolls a six on leadership. You can st instead generate him. So uh, guess what? Hawkeye and Hawkeye over 50 points and has shield keyword. So that's another great person to come off the sideline. And then he can also, whenever he gets leadership, he can be generating more um, shield agents, so you can have some kind of fodder just running in there if you want to. He also has incapacitate that can also deal his printed damage value to hit characters given an action token. And, you know, he also has some outwit in addition to his special leadership. So he's actually a pretty great character to come in for free and another shield team ability and everything. So not too bad if uh, you manage to get a six on leadership with Hawkeye and Hawkeye. It's a really, really great character to bring in early. So that's already three sideline slots with the mystery card. For our fourth slot, like I mentioned, earlier we're going to be playing the zombie superman i'll throw him up on screen real quick just so you guys can be reminded of what he does uh he'll be placed on his last non-ko click before the zombie dial and then be healed too so the really cool thing there is that you know he'll have a couple clicks in him to do some stuff and if he does get ko'd he gets to that zombie dial which gives him three clicks they have to you know hit him at least three times because each click, you know, he can only take one at a time. And he gets that super duper pulse wave that does like printed damage within like his full range or whatever craziness. <laughs> it's super strong. Uh, one of the, if not the best option to uh, bring out for the world's finest. If you don't have that zombie Superman, not a big deal. You know, the super rare Batman from Batman Team Up is also probably one of the best options. Um, or the zombie Batman DC's Chase is another great option as well. But Superman's probably the best. And another reason he's one of the best ones is because our other fifth sideline slot is going to be this black suit Superman from the Death of Superman Iconics set. And the reason for that is he has a sideline active trait that whenever a friendly character with the Superman team ability is KO'd after resolutions, uh, if Superman is on your sideline, you can give him a resurrection token and roll a d6, adding the number of resurrection tokens to the result. On a six or more, generate Superman from your sideline into the last square uh, the friendly character last occupied on his 50 point starting line. So boom, right there. Uh, so yeah, you just get to, uh, whenever our uh, World's Finest duo would be KO'd, you can roll for this. Um, you put a resurrection token on him, you roll if you get a, f basically, you know, adding the tokens, if you basically roll a five or six, you'll get to generate him in addition to the zombie Superman. Uh, if you don't get the roll, however, you know, Zombie Superman has a Superman team ability, so if he gets KO'd, it gives you another chance to roll for this Superman coming in to replace the Zombie Superman. So when the Zombie Superman would be KO'd, you can roll for it again, and it gives you another chance to bring this guy out uh, to generate him when the Zombie Superman would be KO'd. So pretty awesome. You got at least two chances, and it just says that can use the Superman team ability. So I think 
you could also uh, use that, like if you had this guy copying the Superman team ability and he gets KO'd, or if you had this guy take it when he, uh, you know, takes a team ability at the beginning of the game, um, you know, that's another two options to potentially roll for that because they can use the Superman team ability. So yeah, I think Superman's a pretty good sideline option there. And we have one last sideline option and we don't have any primes on the team. So I think the best one obviously would be Absorbing Man Prime. Again, unfortunately don't have him yet. Still working on that one. I'll put him up on screen as well, just like the zombie Superman. So you can take another look at him. Be reminded that he's a very good sideline option. You put four little token marker things out at the beginning of the game and you basically slowly move them into the middle where uh, if they all get into the same square, you can just pop out a full point Absorbing Man for free. And that's just absolutely nuts. So I'm working on getting myself a freaking Absorbing Man already. <laughs> I've been trying for a while. It's not working out. But uh, yeah, I need to get me one of those. But if you don't have one of those Absorbing Mans like me, there's plenty of other good options. You have all of the other mystery cards to choose from. You could just use another one of those. Or, you know, you could also use War Machine. That's another thing I just throw on every single sideline I make, of course. You know, War Machine, pretty awesome. He comes in whenever a Stark Industries character gets hit. And since White Shirt Scott Porter has all keywords all the time, if he gets hit, you can generate War Machine next to him. So that is pretty much it, however. I feel like I should maybe also be mentioning tarot cards in some of these team builds, but usually my advice for tarot cards is always to just play whatever you got that you actually have powers to use with on the team. Like, you know, using the flurry one would be good because you got Batman who has flurry. The close combat expert one would be great because you got a couple people with close combat expert. You know, even the one that does it for like penetrating blast or precision strike for our range attackers is good. Uh, the, the TK one to remove a token after you TK. Moving three squares with sidestep is really good for all these guys. Like whatever you got, you know, it doesn't really matter too much. The super senses plus one is great actually for these guys. Uh, so yeah, a lot of good options for tarot cards as always. Just use whatever you got that works for you. But that's pretty much it for the team, you guys. Let me know all your thoughts and opinions about it in the comments below because I'd love to talk about it with you guys. And if you enjoyed this video or got anything out of it, don't forget to smash that like button because it does help me out a lot. And don't forget to click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. But if you'd like to help support the channel even more, don't forget to check the links in the description for our Patreon or hit that join button down there for the YouTube memberships. For as little as $1 a month, either way, you get to see your name here in the credits with all these other awesome people and be entered into our monthly giveaways. So check that out if that interests you. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Till next time, this has been HeroClix Headquarters, signing off. Thank you.